Hello and welcome to yet another video by Pale Blue Thoughts. In the last couple of episodes, we discussed the principles of homeopathy to see why this can be called a pseudoscience. Today, in the final episode of the series, we will look at why people still think it works and why governments are not banning it. It should be pretty clear to anyone from the principles of homeopathy that it is nothing but faith, a placebo which gives homeopathy its curative powers. The first principle, like cures like, is akin to fighting fire using fire and the second principle of infinite dilution is similar to mixing one paracetamol in the Atlantic Ocean, for instance, and then once it has been thoroughly mixed, taking a drop from that to cure a fever. Any substance in this world loses potency when diluted, except homeopathic medicines. They seem to grow powerful as you dilute them. The more you dilute and shake it, the stronger it becomes. No one knows and can explain how it works, including the homeopaths. They still sit with the indoctrinated principle that we don't know how it works, but it works. How can anything that goes against the basic principles of science be called scientific? Homeopathy is definitely pseudoscience and I can repeat this not once but 130 times if you want to. So why do people still believe in it? Why doesn't the governments ban it? These are common questions that homeopathy supporters pose when you question their belief in the healing system. Welcome to the final part of delusions about dilutions. Almost all of the evidence that homeopathy can bring to the table are anecdotal evidence. I have personal experience that homeopathy treated my disease. I have already explained this before, regression to the mean. This means that almost all diseases have a life cycle. All non-serious diseases get cured by itself after a period of time. Since there is a placebo effect when a homeopathic drug is taken, the patient thinks that the drug has worked whereas the disease actually cured by itself after completion of its cycle. Also, since there is a placebo effect, homeopathy can probably be effective in pain management since we may mentally feel better after having it. But it cannot cure a disease. A country like India has a serious lack of access to good healthcare systems. India has 0.55 hospital beds per thousand people while WHO recommends five beds per thousand people. So people, mostly from rural areas, lack access to modern medicine facilities and have to resort to such healing systems as homeopathy and other herbal medicine systems like Ayurveda and naturopathy. Couple this with a poor education system where people are mostly ignorant about science, alternate medicines can have a free run. Poverty is another factor as a visit to a homeopathic doctor costs less than half the price charged by a medical doctor in India. So why do youths who complete their standard 12 want to become homeopathic doctors? Most often they are students who fail to make the cut into a modern medicine college because they fail to reach the cutoff score. To become a doctor, be it homeopathic, is a big status symbol for many people. Their desire to become a doctor forces them to learn the pseudoscientific system of medicine. Once they are through with their four or five years of indoctrination in a homeopathic college, they are forced to adopt this as a way of living. This is called a sunk cost fallacy. People commit the sunk cost fallacy when they continue a behavior or endeavor as a result of previously invested resources like time, money or effort. India is perhaps the only country where the medical education system has these tires. People with higher marks get into a modern medicine college. People who do not make this cut has to either choose an alternative like homeopathy or Ayurveda or other naturopathic healing systems. In almost all other countries, there is a choice for the individual to take a branch of study that they prefer. If they want to take up homeopathy, then they attend a diploma course and they may want to practice it. Nowhere are people forced to take it up because of obtaining lesser marks except perhaps in India. Also, it is widely accepted in India that 
homeopathy and ayurveda provide a back door entry into medicines those who don't get into medical colleges try to get into general practice in rural areas through other systems some homeopathic docs even take undue advantage and prescribe modern medicine drugs to their patients in spite of this being illegal the supreme court has categorically issued verdicts that cross practicing amounts to quackery but you would be amazed to learn that as many as 90% of doctors qualified in a system other than modern medicine are administering pharmaceutical modern medicine drugs according to the 52nd round of india's national sample survey many homeopathic doctors are now giving mother tinctures or undiluted or very minimally diluted medicines in an effort to cure diseases this is against the principles that they have been indoctrinated with and it poses a higher risk of harmful effects from taking the medicine especially if it involves administration of crude substances or heavy metals people can have serious side effects which may come later in their lives such as heavy metal toxicity it may be noted that no homeopathic doctor or researcher tests for side effects of their medicines they just assume that there are no side effects much like their master unfortunately assumptions are the fulcrum around which this faith based healing system turns like master like students another bone of contention is that students of complementary and alternative medicine also study the same subjects that modern medicine students study yes lately the government has introduced subjects which are taught in modern medicine colleges such as anatomy histology embryology physiology biochemistry etc however at the end of it all they still treat their patients with sugar pills and water they may learn the advanced subjects but to treat diseases they have to resort to a book that was written way before the light bulb was invented before there were thermometers blood pressure monitors knowledge of blood groups and the germ theory of disease for them the organ of medicine is just as infallible and holy just like the bhagavad gita quran or bible they can't go beyond that and adopt newer or better form of treatment because science has found it an inability to change is one of the characteristics of all pseudoscience and homeopathy fits the bill perfectly science on the other hand has no such inhibitions it is always happy to embrace new things and is also humble enough to self correct itself one of the questions that people most often ask in retort is if you feel that homeopathy is pseudoscience why doesn't the government ban it well you need to realize that the government as an institution has to cater to the people's wants and they have to ensure that they receive it in a proper manner remember it is the same government that allows for the sale of cigarettes and alcohol that is because people demand it there are regulations put in place by the government to ensure that they reach the public without adulteration and without the intervention of illegitimate agents to choose a method of treatment is a citizen's choice and the government is forced to cater to it and has to ensure that there is no foul play involved and homeopathy is not an illegal form of treatment it is just unscientific banning a system overnight has a lot of consequences it would be the same government that would have to then provide alternate employment to the thousands of alternate medicine doctors and their support functions like pharmacies also banning something that people demand can cause serious repercussions like what we have seen with alcohol bans there would be an increase in a spurious and unregulated sale of the same products hence the government is forced to provide a safe way of delivering the same most important of all the governments should have a focus and a concern about the primary health care of its citizens sadly we find that lacking in many of our leaders who just cater to vote bank politics where there is vote the chances of strong policies are remote so what can governments do they can slowly bring down the demand for such scams in small steps first by removing insurance claims for such healing systems if citizens want to go for such pseudo scientific remedies then they must utilize their own money to pay for it remove all public funding for such unscientific treatments which is what many governments are doing it is not right for any government to utilize public funds to support a healthcare system 
which has been proven not to have any therapeutic effects. In fact, many countries have already started to do it, notably France and England, where homeopathy was formerly prevalent are in the process of removing all public funding. The National Health Service or NHS in England ceased funding homeopathic remedies in 2017 and asked the Department of Health in the UK to add homeopathic remedies to the blacklist of forbidden prescription items and France will remove funding from this year. This is highly important as France has for long had a stronger belief in the virtues of homeopathic drugs than many other countries and the world's biggest manufacturer of alternative medicine drugs, Boiron, is located in that country. In 2018, Spain also announced moves to ban homeopathy and other pseudotherapies. In 2015, the National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia found that there were no health conditions for which there is reliable evidence that homeopathy is effective. In 2017, the US FDA announced that it would strengthen regulation of homeopathic products. Way back in 2005, Lancet, one of the most reputed scientific and medical journals, published an article stating the end of homeopathy after numerous studies based on meta-analysis of studies done on homeopathy. Likewise, all other reputed studies done so far have not been able to find a single piece of evidence supporting the claims of homeopathy. You can't find a single molecule of an original substance in its medicine and you can't find a single study proving its efficacy. But what does Indian government do? They create a new ministry to promote what other countries are banning. The Indian government recognizes homeopathy as one of its national systems of medicine and they are sold with medical claims. It has established the Department of Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy or Ayush under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. It passed the National Commission for Homeopathy Bill in 2020. This bill sought to repeal the Homeopathy Central Council Act of 1973 and establish a quality education system for homeopathy medicine. It also seeks to establish a National Commission of Homeopathy or NCH. Moreover, within three years of the passage of this bill, the state governments would be required to set up state medical councils for homeopathy. It is our money, yours and mine included, which is being utilized to support this established form of quackery. If you are still unsure about the efficiency and efficacy of homeopathy, the best place to start would be Wikipedia. The first line itself tells the entire story. It states that homeopathy is a pseudoscientific system of alternate medicine. It goes on to state the principles and treatment methods that we have discussed here on this channel and goes on to cite various studies which show that this method of treatment is ineffective. I have not included them all for want of time, but you are free to spend some time reading about it. Since Wikipedia comes under the Creative Commons Attribution License and that people can make changes to it citing research and studies, many homeopaths have tried to remove the first line which claims homeopathy as a pseudoscience. But they have failed as Wikipedia refused to remove the claim and has now blocked people from attempting to change it further. The article has more than 200 different references and citations which clearly proves that this form of healing is either just another system of healing which works on belief and suggestion or is a reckless fraud. So what can be the conclusion? It has quite clearly been established that homeopathy is an ineffective and pseudoscientific form of treatment. People still follow it due to a lack of understanding of how it works. Even homeopaths do not have an idea how it works. People often fall for anecdotal evidence when they see that it worked for a friend or a family. They fail to pause and think how it would work. For if homeopathy works, then physics and chemistry is just horse poop. But science has been proven to work, whereas homeopathy has not passed that test. What is the way out? First. The proponents have to prove its scientificity by proving how extreme dilutions lead to more powerful medicines. Then they have to conduct proper double-blinded placebo-controlled tests to determine its efficacy. Then they have to place these test results in front of the world so that people can see if these are valid 
and are repeatable. Only then can we claim that it works and is scientific. Sadly, so far, the results have been pretty much diluted like their medicines. What we can do is to spread the awareness among the people who fall victims to the anecdotal claims and that has been my goal with this series. Strange as it may sound, I did not get a single negative response to my earlier videos. Maybe my viewers understood it and have accepted it. Of course, you have scientific temper now, right? Or maybe you are too kind to me. But remember, ad hominem remarks are not going to make something unscientific scientific. Homeopathy is a pseudoscientific and a faith-based healing system and a threat to public health. The more this reaches people, the more people would be aware of the pitfalls of complementary and alternate medicines. Like the famous slogan against ivory trade said, when the buying stops, the killing can too. So stop buying homeopathic medicines and don't let the next generation to study the scam treatment. Better homeopathy dies a slow death than any of us or our family members. There are some things that money can't buy. One of them is health and for that there is only one mastercard, modern medicine. Until next time, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.